So have you guys seen the price of Bitcoin lately? Okay, that's probably not the best way to open this one up. But what we want to do is look at a title. It's really more of a benchmark. It's been out for some time. However, it has gotten regular updates, so it is on the latest generation or the latest version of it for the testing. We're talking about none other than Neon Noir. Now, this was something done by Crytek whenever they developed a ray tracing algorithm that was going to work across the board. It was system agnostic. So rather than working with NVIDIA or AMD to develop this, they did it themselves. And this this is going to be the first one that we've really gotten to look at that had no outside input as far as I'm aware of. If there was, let me know down in the comment section below because I totally missed that one. But we took the Neon Noir benchmark and we ran all of the latest graphics cards through it. So the RTX 30 series and the RX 6800 series and the 6900 XT. So we did all of them. So we did the 3060 Ti all the way up to the 3090 and the 6800 up to the 6900 XT. And we did it on our test bench. It's the same one that we've been using for a while. Now there are no special tricks going on here. Smart access memory is not enabled and there's no DLSS to use. We just wanted to see kind of like out of the box how it does. I did test smart access memory just out of curiosity and it really didn't make any difference at all in this particular title. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference in a lot of ray tracing titles. So maybe something in the future, it might, I don't know. But for right now, it's kind of what it is. So, um, you know, we ran through the benchmark. We did it 1080p, 1440, and 4K. And I did a look at 4K using uh, setting scaling. So you only had very high and ultra. So we did them all on ultra. You know what? Let's stop talking about what we did and let's talk about what they ended up looking like. So starting things off at 1080p. So this is how things kind of shook out. You had the 3060 Ti at the bottom, which is expected because it is the least expensive of the cards. It's the 399 model card all the way up to $1,500 on this scale. And you see that it's, um, well, it actually has better 1% percentiles than the 6800 in this particular one, which is quite interesting. And the average frame rate fell one FPS short. Now, moving up to the 3070, clearly it's a little bit faster, good little bit faster, good 10, 10 plus percent jump on the 1% percentiles. And it was just behind the 6800 XT. Now, interestingly enough here, the 3080 bested the 6900 XT in this particular title, and the 3090 is clearly CPU constrained as it is only marginally better than the 3080. But moving things into 1440p, we see that that mark on the 3090 and 3080 stretch out by a good, good bit there. So that's where you start to really see that stretch there. And you see the same, the, the lineup doesn't really shift. Everything kind of stays about the same. The 3060 Ti again falls behind the 6800, but has much better 1% percentiles. And then the same thing is said across the board. So the 68, the 3070 has closed the gap a little bit there with the 6800 XT. And well, honestly, all of these numbers are really high. So at 1440p, all of the cards are going to be really good in this benchmark that you can't really play. So it's, it's, again, it's just a benchmark. We're just trying to see where things lay because we haven't updated this in quite some time. Uh, 4K, moving into 4K, full UHD. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. The only card that's going to break 60 FPS is going to be the 3080. The 6900 XT is about 10 FPS behind it and 14 FPS on the 1% percentile. And the RTX 3090 pulls a considerable margin ahead of the 3080. And the 6800 is now matched by the 3060 Ti with the 1% percentiles even better. But neither one of those are going to give you what I would consider a very uh, good experience at 4K. So, you know, these are not for the, the well, the 6800 is arguably an entry level 4K card. I would not consider the 3060 Ti a 4k car and even in the review for the 3070 made the statement that i probably would not be buying that one for 4k 1440p is a different story but it shows here that uh yeah even the 3070 has better one percent percentiles than the 6900 xt at 4k quite interesting there uh now moving into scaling what about uh you know 6900 xt and the 3090 on the on the same chart here and we're looking at very high and ultra scaling to see the difference that you get there and you can see a considerable performance increase for the 6900 XT when you move to very high instead of ultra. However, even at very high, the 6900 XT falls behind the RTX 3090 at ultra. And it, the, the 3090 gets a considerable boost, especially in the 1% percentiles when you move to very high from ultra. So there you have it guys. That's an update to the Neon Noir benchmark test. And we did way back in the day with the 20 series and the 50, 5000 series 
from AMD. So we felt it really good idea to go ahead and revisit it. It's a quick short one. Kind of gives you something to look at and discuss because quite frankly, if you're trying to buy any one of these cards and you haven't gotten them already, who knows when you'll be able to. So if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, you got any comments, you know where to leave them. You liked it, like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.